Have you ever wondered if you can work with low-code tooling inside of Visual Studio? Well, now you actually can. So Marcel is here to tell us all about it. Hi everyone, and welcome to a new episode of the Low-Code Revolution. Today, we have a very, very nice topic, and it's really near and dear to my heart. And it's the Visual Studio integration of the Power Platform. And to tell us all about that, we have a very special guest. Uh, you've probably seen him before in one of the episodes, but here he is, Marcel Ferreira. Hi, Marcel, how are you doing? Hi, hello, Daniel, good to see you again. Yeah, yeah, we've seen you at the data, um, uh, the data and tools episode of the Power Platform CLI, and today you are back to tell us all about Visual Studio and Power Platform, right? Yes, absolutely. I'm very excited to talk about that. Okay, and can you, before we start, can you introduce yourself a little bit for the viewers yes. that haven't seen you yet? Yes. So yes. So I am Marcel Fajeda. I am a, I am a program manager in the Power Platform Developer Tools. So what we do it is we build tools for the developers. We do tools as Pack CLI and our VS Code integration. So we keep all the developers in the VS Code integration very productive when doing uh, stuff on Power Platform. And now Visual Studio developers as well can get some taste of Power Platform. So I'm really excited to talk about this feature. Yeah, I'm really, really excited <laughs> to hear about it as well. So yeah, I, I think you brought a demo, right? Yes, absolutely. So. Before we jump to the demo, just a quick uh, explanation about uh, the, the integration itself. So our idea is we are addressing web API developers. We have lots of API developers. They are in Visual Studio already. They are building their APIs for their business systems. And, uh, and then they will hand over to another team, or maybe they don't want to do UI themselves because that can be that can be challenging or that can be very time consuming. You have to deal with different frameworks. You have to deal with dependencies. And uh, our proposal it is if you need to create a UI, you as a professional developer, you can use Power Platform. So we are bringing Power Platform within Visual Studio. So I will jump to Visual Studio to show what the experience looks like to make your API that already exists or your new API available to Power Platform. Okay, so let's jump to my Visual Studio here. So the way we enable the integration, uh, it is we added Power Platform as a connected services. So here in my Visual Studio, I have a very simple API, uh, which I will actually run so we can see what it does. He should be coming in a minute. That's a web API project standard, nothing fancy about it. I'm using Swagger and this API just uh, returns a list of countries and a list of city. And this is a get, and this is a get with a parameter. So here you need to specify the country and it will return a list of cities. So, okay, I have this API in my machine. And uh, look, this API is not published, it's running in my machine. And I can still use Power Platform, and that's the beauty of this integration. So what I will do is I will go ahead and add Power Platform in my Visual Studio project. So what we need it is, first we need to have a Power Platform environment. Uh, if you don't have, you can get a developer plan to try yourself. Once you have your account, you can log in your account here and uh, the integration will retrieve the list of environments. I will go ahead and select my developer environment, dev. And then what it will do is it will re re retrieve a list of existing custom connectors. And if you don't have one, you can create one yourself. Okay, so I will create in the dev environment and also I can specify which solution I'm using. So in my environment, I already have a solution named country, which I'll use for the demo. And I will create a custom connector with this name, VPCDs demo. This is really cool that you can also select a solution in there. Yes, for for developers are writing Power Platform, they mm -hmm. know how important it is for ALM to use a solution, right? Yeah. So we want to make ALM friendly for sure. Nice. Another beauty of this is it uses uh, another feature of Visual Studio called Dev Tunnels. I will create one Dev Tunnels, and while it's creating, I will talk a little bit about it. Okay. 
So let's select a name here. I will call Dev Tunnel One. I will go ahead and select OK, and I will finish. And what this will do, it will first, it will generate my uh, open AI specification for me. I can specify one myself if I want or if I need. Uh, and also, it will create a dev tunnel for me. So what it means is this API is running my local machine, right? But I need a public endpoint to be able to create a custom connector for a power platform. So dev tunnel will create a tunnel to expose the API running my machine to a public endpoint. In this way, I can use this custom connector and I can also debug in real time. I'll go ahead here and close. And actually now I'm ready to run uh, my API. I will go ahead and run. Okay, here's my API running, right? So what I can do now, it is, and from Visual Studio, I can open the maker portal. What that uh, will do, it will bring me here to the list of the custom connectors and in the right environment, okay, the environment that I connected. You can see the custom connector has been created here. So with this custom connector, I can go ahead and I could create a flow, I could create a page, but I, I will go ahead and create a quick Canvas app just to show the fact that uh, we can call our APIs and even with parameters. So let, let's go country. Okay, so first we need to add the data, right? So my connector is called PP Cities Demo. I can find it here. So let's add, it will create a connection. Let's, now that we have the data, let's add a gallery, simple gallery. And that can show the items, right? That's, um... That's from the uh, from the API. A gallery shows the li yeah the little items there. Correct. And once I'm doing uh, using a custom connector, I can call the methods of my API, right? So I have this method get country. So let's retrieve the list of the country. There you are, and let's change the layout. I is just a title because I only have one field, and here I have the list of countries from my API. Right. Now let's add another gallery just to show how to call one method with parameters. So let's add another vertical gallery. Uh, we will use the same connector, but a different operation. So let's call the get cities, right? Mm -hmm. And we need to specify the country. So we want to get the country from the gallery, right? So we want to get the country from the gallery one. So I'll choose the gallery one. And I will just get this selected. The name of the field, I think, is value. Yep. OK, that should do it. Let's just move here. And I can resize. And Power Platform will take care of the UI for you. I will change the layout. I'm not a UI guy, so for me, this is a super easy way to create a UI. And here I have the, let's run to see how it looks like. So there we go. I have a list of countries, and depending on the country selected here, I will see the cities. So very simple and easy. I created a, a super simple app. Really nice. And this is calling now the, um, the web API that you are running locally. Correct. So let's have a look on that. Good you mentioned. Cool. Let's put a breakpoint here and let's try to debug. Uh, let me open my country on my very complex code and let's add <laughs> a breakpoint here. <laughs> let's go back here and I will try to refresh. Let me open again. Let me select. Uh, I think this will not do. I let me change. Let me select the city actually. Okay. There you go. Ah. And, and here I can see I selected Brazil. And uh, I could debug if I have some complex logic in real time with the API in my machine even before publishing it. 
And uh, once you are done on your inner loop, you are done with your app. Okay, I will put the app in the same solution. Uh, at some point, I will need to publish this app, right? Then I will have yeah. a then I will have an endpoint, a real endpoint. And once I'm done to publish, uh, when I published my API, here I don't have a published, and that's fine. But what I can do it is I can publish the custom connector again and update the endpoint. So I could either use the same custom connector to publish to our endpoint, to a real mm -hmm. endpoint, or I can create a new custom connector. Uh, or I could use a PIM as well, which is another option. But I think we can cover that other day. My point yeah. today it is I really will, I, I'm really excited about this feature. It's a great first step to enable web API developers to get started with Power Platform as well. It's a very productive way to create apps. Yeah, I totally agree. I, I love the fact that you can now just really easily from within Visual Studio just um, yeah, publish it to your uh, Power Platform environment and you don't have to switch back and forth all the time because that used to be the case, of course, and now you can also debug it live and uh, and uh, yeah, just uh, um, change your code whenever you need to. So that's a really, uh, really great, uh, uh, great uh, option that you have now. And are there any plans to expand on this? Because you, uh, we now have the connected services, um, yes. so you can see like um, there, uh, you can connect <coughs> to a, a, an environment. You can, um, yeah, publish your uh, your connector there. Yes, um, absolutely. Are there any plans? Absolutely. So this first step, we are focusing on the inner loop experience, is which is when you're developing. So we are providing basic capability for you to publish. Next step, we want to work more in the outer loop experience. So how do you publish? How you do proper CI, CD, all this nice stuff. And for this, it's crucial for you to give us feedback. So first, I'll ask you, go ahead and try the feature. If you download the preview of Visual Studio, uh, you will get this feature already. You can get a developer plan so you can get a Power Platform environment to test on your APIs. And if you have any feedback, let us know. Uh, I will be keen to connect and to understand uh, uh, your, your need and how to enable to make more productive. That's our main goal. Yeah, that's great. And I probably will uh, add the uh, the links in the in the description below so that people can uh, can go to your blog post that you wrote about it that has a lot of a lot more details and of course the documentation that's behind it. So uh, yes, yeah, we have a specific there. We have a specific email for this feature as well if people want to reach out. So I think it will be listed here. So yeah, please reach out. Please great. try it. Okay, thanks a lot, Marcel. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited about this feature and uh, all that's coming. So uh, yeah, make sure to try it out and um, yeah, give the feedback to Marcel and make sure that, uh, that you just try it out and uh, uh, do some cool stuff with it. And with that, we are at the end of the episode. So um, leave your comments below if you want to uh, uh, ask some questions and we'll see you at the next episode.